the London Eye is that big Ferris wheel in uh, London. Um, and it's got a diameter of 394 feet, and at the highest point, it's 443 feet tall. What's going on there? Like, this is bigger than this, so let's draw a picture of the thing. Let's draw, draw me a wheel. Let's draw the wheel. So I love that you're already thinking about amplitude, and I love that you 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 focused on the diameter. But but I heard I heard a couple of people actually already kind of thinking about radius instead. So what does the radius end up being? One ninety seven, which means from here to here is one ninety seven, and from here to here is one ninety seven. Agreed. Um, and it tops out at a Y value of what? 443. It tops out at 443, which means the bottom of this wheel must not be right at ground level. Right? 443 is where it tops out. It's one night, or sorry, it's, uh, it's not 197, it's 349 below that would be the bottom of the wheel, which is where? What's 443 minus 394? 49. So if you're on the very bottom of this Ferris wheel, you're still almost 50 feet off the ground, okay? So like to get on the Ferris wheel, you gotta go into a building and go up a few flights of stairs. So what I want to do is I want to sketch ourselves a little, well, I'm going to make myself a, a sketch. And I'm not drawing a, anything on the right-hand side of this because I'm not 100% sure right now whether I want to go for a sine or a cosine. Um, if in the context of this situation, are we starting at the bottom or the center or the top? G and Brewsty are getting on at the bottom, right? So I'm thinking like we want our time to start right here. And, and so I'm thinking maybe a negative cosine equation might be a good one for this. We'll go ahead and sketch one period of negative cosine. So we're going to say that the x coordinate here is 0. What's the y coordinate at that point? What's the y coordinate at that point? It's 49. And then this 443 would be the highest it's ever going to go, right? You know, it might be useful for us to have this center point. That's going to end up being our vertical shift eventually. 49 plus 197 is 246. Okay. Well, we almost have enough to write the equation for this. It would be great if I knew how wide it was, then I would know what my period was. This is representing time. It's time, yeah, and this would be height. So it takes 30 minutes, I think it says, to go around one, one full revolution. So, so this would happen at 30. I think we got everything we need to write an equation, don't we? We got, a, we got a vertical shift. Are we going to need a horizontal shift for this one? No, because no, it's already starting at zero. We know our period, so we'll be able to find omega. We know our amplitude is 197. So go ahead and write me a, a cosine equation, a negative cosine equation. And I left out the whole parentheses inside with the x because we don't need a, hor a horizontal shift at all. What would be the reason I chose a negative cosine? That's a great question. Um, in the context of this problem, 
if I'm thinking about the, an actual Ferris wheel, I need to think about like, and it's, this is totally arbitrary by the way, okay? But when you think about a Ferris wheel, like when your Ferris wheel ride starts, are you typically at the top of the Ferris wheel or the bottom of the Ferris wheel or in the middle of the Ferris wheel? I'd say in, in, at the bottom is usually where this ride starts, right? There may be some wacky Ferris wheels out there where you gotta climb up some stairs and get on at the top, but I don't know why they do that to you. So that's why I chose to do a negative cosine. Um, when you get to the, the Bob the Alien problem, I think, I think we're starting out at a maximum. So in this problem, you might choose to do a positive cosine instead. So it kind of just depends on what's convenient for, the, for, for your problem. Um, since we're talking about this ride that starts at 320, I'm, I'm saying that's time zero. We're at the bottom of the Ferris wheel at that point. That's the reason I chose that. Great question. Thank you. Uh, what'd you guys come up with for omega? Uh, pi over 15. That's what I got too. And our amplitude was 197. And our vertical shift was 246. Wonderful. Okay. So... We need to answer some questions about this. Why did I put 246? Because that's where my center line is. We always shift vertically to the center line. Was it 210 instead? Did I get it wrong? Okay. All right. Um, oh, we are running out here. All right, let's finish this up. Can you guys get your calculators out, please? Calculator's out. Where's mine? Did I give you my calculator? Do you have my calculator? Or did you, did, did you give it back to me? There's an old timey saying that says Bob's your uncle. I know. It's, it's a pun. It's not a very good pun. Hey, go into your y equals, type that equation, and guys, I need you to stop the side conversation because we are quickly running out of time, and I want you to know how to finish. You're going to need to finish the rest of these. So type your equation in, and then do not hit the graph button. You need to set up your window. We have already made a sketch of what our window is going to look like, so use that sketch that we just made to help you figure out your x max, your x min, Y max, Y min, and everything else. So X min zero, make it go up to 30. Uh, maybe a tick mark every five. Y min, I'm gonna set my Y min to zero. And I'm gonna make it go up to something higher than 443. How about 450? And I don't want to have 450 tick marks. Maybe we'll do a tick mark every 50 here. That would make sense. Uh-oh, flat line. What's that mean? Probably means I'm in the wrong mode. Probably in degree mode. Uh, now I'm in radian mode. Okay, guys, look up here, please. Stop the side conversations and look up here because we're running out of time. Um, you guys have done this with other graphs. If I asked you to evaluate this thing, it asks um, how high up were they at 330? What would our time value be at 330? T would be 10. Do you know how to take a graph and tell it an X coordinate and ask it to give you the Y coordinate? We've done this at least two dozen times. Second calc. Which one of our options here is going to allow me to put in an X value and get a Y value out? Value. value. Guys, we've done this so many times. You need to know, like, be able to punch those buttons quickly. If I put in 10, it tells me we're going to be about 344 and a half feet off the ground. How am I going to answer the last question? They're asking me at what time are they going to be about 315 feet off the ground? That would be about that far off of the ground. What are we going to do? To, you know, we know what <laughs> we're going to set y equal to 315. 
So we're going to get ourselves a horizontal line here at 315. And then which button are we pushing in our calculate menu this time? Second calc. Now, do we want the first time that we're there? Oh, it says what times? So we need to find two intersections. There are going to be two intersections here and here. So I don't know what you mean by substitution. How about intersect? How about intersect? It's going to ask you for a first curve. I'm on the sign. That's my first one. Second curve is my horizontal line. My guess, I need to move my cursor over close to this. And you should be getting about 9.2 minutes. So that's about nine minutes after they started, which would be about 329. And then I would need to figure out where that other point is. So second calc intersect again. I know I'm rushing through this, folks, but I want you to just see this is this is nothing new, okay? That whole back page of that last test you took, you were basically doing the same thing with a different type of equation. So um, intersection, one, two, three, uh, about 20.8, so about 21 minutes later, so that would be about three... 21 minutes after, that would be 3.41. Okay. Um, there is no...